there and welcome back to Building the Boys. We now have issue 86 of Hashet's Build the Titanic. Now in this one we will be adding more hull, um, which is a beautiful thing because it's going to firm up that piece that we've got over there. So the piece that we installed in the last one, I was a little concerned about it because I'm thinking that could bend easy. Well this will stop that from happening. So this is the upper port side section. We're just going to go to the lower port side section that we did. Um, but again, it is pretty much a repeat. So we're going to screw into the little BM screws, sort of. I assume that's going to hold a magnet. Um, I can't, I, you know, I can't prove that, but I assume that's what it's going to do. And then it is literally a case of two, two of the Allen screws to hold this in place. Um, at the end, we will be having another tail from the Titanic. Um, and this one is quite harrowing. This is, this is about kind of like, some of the fear that the survivors took with them. Um, so there was survivor's guilt naturally, but there was something in particular I read that was, I thought was so poignant um, of something that haunted somebody for their whole life after the Titanic. We'll talk about that one at the end. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get this one open. Let's get this whole belt. Okay, so let's have a look at what we get inside. 86. It's pretty much going to be a repeat, I think. I mean, just a, a slight variation of what we did in the last one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks almost identical. So we've got our um, our two bags of screws there. So there's the little BM screws. Um, and then we have... Aha! There we have it. Lovely stuff. Now, all these portals drilled out. I know the portals have been a sticking point for a lot of people. Uh, but all these ports are drilled out, so, you know, relax. Um, right, let's put our BM screws in. So we've got two little BM screws to sit in here first. Um, I assume these hold a magnet. Might not, might be something else, might be a hinge for all I know, but I, I reckon it's a bloody magnet. Um, so we're going to take one BM screw and it's going to sit in here. It doesn't screw into anything, which is why I'm thinking it's going to hold a magnet. And it's going to go all the way down. As far as it will go. So it's that one. And now we have screw number two. It's going to screw in. There. Wow. Okay. I had to find that. Uh, it's just up here. There we go. So, so it's two in. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to the hull. Okay, so we're going to get this one in place going that way around. Uh, and we are going to slot over there and there, like. Where are we now? Aha, uh -huh, I see. Hmm. Surely not. I don't know about that. Let me have a look. So there is a lip to contend with. So this goes over and then folds in. And then that holds lovely and tight there. So again, it's Allen bolts. Yeah, Allen bolts. But I've got the screwdriver, so it, it, they're not quite the uh, the terror they used to be for me. Um, I'm going to touch these in the oil just to make the transition a little easier. Because I do want these as tight as I can possibly get. And I'm aware of swore from what not being on these. Whoop. Let's get you straight there. There we go, I can feel that pulling together lovely. There we go, that's that one in. Now we have one more to do. And then this one is in the record books. Right. Touching the three and one. <laughs> it's a terrible camera angle there. There we go. And there we have it. So we have this window where we're going to see the engine through. So we now know exactly where the engines are going to sit inside the ship. Um, let's uh, let's zoom out and we'll have a chat. 
be. I mean, <laughs> with very little to do, um, it still is quite the impact. So this is, I mean, this is ridiculous. Now look at this thing. This is insane. And we're still, <laughs> we've still got so much to go on this. Um, just crazy. Absolutely crazy. But uh, in a fantastic way, the best way. Um, if you are just sticking around the building instructions, thank you for stopping by. Um, if you are sticking around for our Titanic talk, uh, we will be talking about a young man named Frankie Goldsmith. Now, Frankie Goldsmith was nine years old and he was traveling to Detroit with his uh, his parents on board Titanic. Um, and Frankie held on to something that terrified him after that night, scared him, scared him a lot. Um, and something that would absolutely strike fear into his heart is um, is this. Navin Stadium, Navin Baseball Stadium, uh, based in Detroit, and it was the home of the Tigers. Um, and Frankie lived close to it, and he said that it haunted him. And the reason why is because the night of the sinking of the Titanic, Frankie's mother and father took him to the lifeboats. Frankie's mother and Frankie got a place on the boats. The father, obviously not being a woman and child first, didn't. Um, he put his hand on Frankie's shoulder and he said, don't worry, Frankie, it's all going to be okay. I'll see you later. And he never did. Um, and Frankie said, even at the time, he kind of knew he wasn't going to see his dad again. And he said, and his dad pretty much knew I'm not going to see them again, um, which is quite harrowing. But Frankie said that in his time in the lifeboat, he said the thing that... that it, he just couldn't, he could never get past, and a lot of the survivors mentioned this, were the screams. The screams in the dark, he said, was like a roar. He said it didn't sound like screaming that he knew or screaming that he's heard since. He said it was like a roar, the collective scream of the thousands of souls that were going into the water and still screaming on board the, on board the ship. It's not like everybody on board the ship was calm. He said it was just this roar. It was like white noise. And it haunted him. It haunted his dreams. He hated it. Um, now, this is the the thing with just because you survived the Titanic, no one walked away unscathed. So survivor's guilt is a very much a real thing, as is uh, PTSD, which we know a lot more about now. Um, and we learned more about PTSD after after World Wars. Um, but what really hurt Frankie was he said that the roar from the stadium, whenever anybody scored a home run or there was there was a big event happened, the roar that would come from the crowd, he said, would sound almost identical to the screaming that he heard the night of the sink of the Titanic. Every time it, he would cover his, he couldn't take it. He wouldn't walk past the stadium. He never went to the stadium. Um, it traumatized him his whole life. In later life, he was able to walk past stadium. Um, but he, it was horrible. He said, so any kind of roar, he, he would grab his ears and he would, he would hide them away. Um, so PTSD was very much a real thing and uh, people were, you know, people carried it. Another example was a, there was a lady who was unnamed, but it was in a study into PTSD. She was a survivor of the Titanic when she was a child and she never, never discussed it. Never. So if anybody ever asked her about the Titanic, she, nope, nope, don't want to talk about that. And that was it. Never addressed it. Never, never talked about it. But they always said that it never seemed to bother her. She just like, ain't talking about it. And that was it and just went about her day. Now, in later life, um, she sadly developed dementia and then relived it. So she went from never talking about the Titanic to when she was in the nursing home that she was in. She would literally be screaming about the water coming in. And she would mention the screams, please stop them from screaming. And I'm like, her heroin, that she carried that with her her whole life. And then through dementia, is now she's now back on the ship. She's experienced it again. And um, horrifying, truly horrifying. And as I said, this is a bit of a heavy story. But um, it, the reality of it is nobody nobody walked away from the Titanic unscathed. They just didn't. Just because you survived the, the sinking does not mean you went back to a happy life. Um, it, it left its mark on everybody. It really did. Um, there is something that I personally find that a lot of people find a lot scarier than screaming. Um, and that is the complete opposite. And we'll talk about that one in issue 87, but that is all for our Titanic talk this time. Uh, we'll be back very soon with issue 87. Uh, we'll be doing the opposite of what we've just done, uh, adding more hull to the ship and really growing this thing. 
Um, so tune in for that one. We'll be back very, very soon. In a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can contact us at buildingtheboysoutlook.com if you've got any pics of your Titanic collection or, or your modifications you're making. We'd love to see them. Um, until then, take care. We'll be back very, very soon. Uh, thanks for stopping by.